The fact is that the record shows that NATO's intelligence services have been deeply involved in fomenting terrorism over the last 50 years, and Islamist terrorism in particular. Also, Martin, at least two neo-Nazi terror plots have been uncovered uh, in Germany, while security services have cracked down on the anti-government Reichsberger movement after one of its members killed a police officer. We hear hardly anything about these white non-Muslim terrorists, do we? No, we don't, because they're not proper terrorists. They're just, uh, you know... I mean, it's like uh, the, 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 the killing of Joe Cox. Uh, that, was that terrorism? Yes, of course it was. Uh, the question is, how much of this is orchestrated? And I suspect the strategy of tension is, is the way it's always been. The intelligence services are running Islamist terrorism, right-wing terrorism, and then uh, demanding more powers to deal with it. As ever, this will be a link to this article uh, up on our show page at thisweek.org.uk. But finally, Martin, Rudolf Hess, why? Did he spend 42 years in jail? Why? Did his, was his family not allowed to speak to him during that time? He spent over 20 years in Spandau Prison in Berlin, uh, even though he was the only prisoner there. Uh, he was allowed to just see his uh, relatives at once for half an hour every Christmas, but he wasn't re- allowed to have any proper conversations with them, and they weren't allowed to record anything about what he'd spoken to them. Now, one of the main reasons that I've just been reading this book called uh, The Borman uh, Brotherhood, which is by William Stevenson, published in 1973. Uh, William Stevenson was a Canadian journalist, TV producer, back during the Second World War and after. Uh, He said he wrote the book because he said it was quite clear to him that the West is becoming a deepening nightmare. This is in the 1970s because there were so many Nazis seemed to be in key positions. Yeah, I mean, there's there's been a general knowledge about this for years, but I don't think people realise how deeply... Uh, Nazi intelligence networks were embedded in the very creation of NATO. And, of course, the techniques used, which include false flag terrorism, i.e. carrying out an attack, pretending it's somebody else in order to get more power, that's very similar to what the Nazis did in the 30s, but it's much more sophisticated. Two take-homes from this. One is that the head of the Gestapo, uh, Heinrich Müller, uh, who uh, he was tr- actually trained in the 19th, early 1930s, late 1920s, early 1930s, um, in the Soviet Union, uh, as it was at the time, after the Bolshevik Revolution. And that's where he learned his techniques, so the, he- so the head of the Gestapo, which does make you wonder, uh, you know, how close, actually, some people have accused the Nazi regime and the Bolshevik regime of being having rather too many things in common. Uh, but the main reason was because j- before the Second World War, Hess had been involved in in a, uh, a, a, a agreement, a secret agreement between Hitler and Stalin to invade Poland and had divided it up and that was the, because the beginning well, of the Second World War. Well, so it, perhaps that's why they didn't want Hess to be able to talk, to, particularly to the press. Well, I mean, this is speculation. We don't know what Hess knew, because that's, that's why they kept... Well, if you want, I'll put, a, I'll put some, of, the, some yeah. of this evidence from this book by this Canadian journalist in the yeah. 1970s. Well, I mean, everybody knows that at that period, uh, Hitler and Stalin were cooperating quite closely, and therefore their various intelligence services and military were cooperating quite closely. Uh, they were, uh, the Germans were intending to double-cross the Russians all along, uh, but the Russians were too stupid to realise. Well, uh, one does wonder whether people like Desmond Morton and Borman uh, um, had actually you know, knew about these people like Muller, etc. Uh, it's certainly that Muller certainly seems to have survived the war because his grave was said. Oh, it, 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 they, we think that he's there. There was a grave found, and it had three bones from three different bodies in it. It certainly wasn't him. Anyway, I think it's time to sign off now for the Murdoch News at seven. I'll put some links up to that uh, quotes from that book about uh, Rudolf Hess coming up live on Facebook. It's Arabian Nights with Mohammed Makawi and Yusuf. Thanks to our guest in the first hour. That's community activist from. From Hartcliffe, Kerry Bales and Steve Norman from Avonmouth, also to Old Labour Oxford economist Martin Summers, our sister show Dialects here on BCFM at noon every Tuesday. This show's story links and comments page is one word, thisweek.org.uk. Download our MP3s and you can listen in the car, iPlayer, or anywhere you like. You'll find me on Twitter during the week at Tony Gosling. Here's wishing you a relaxing and enjoyable BCFM weekend. Billy Quain, Saturday edition tomorrow morning, 10 till 12. All the way through till The Real Musical Deal, Sunday evening, 7 till 8 with Danny Lopsh. I'll leave you with music from 2006. Yes, it's the other Freemasons. Do please join us at the same time next week. God bless, and don't let the banksters get you down. (laughs) 